Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Off The Sprue. This is episode 27 and in this one I'll show you a quick and easy way of making uh, ammunition bandoliers in 135 scale. Now we're nearly done with the uh, interior of the M113 and uh, one of the last things I wanted to add uh, was an M16 uh, ammunition bandolier. Now in most uh, reference pictures you'll notice these where there are M16 rifles uh, You'll, uh, you'll see uh, infantrymen carrying these, these bandoliers. Usually they carried six magazines. For most of the war, uh, US infantrymen uh, were stuck with 20 round magazines for their rifles. Of course, later in the war, the 30 round magazines uh, started appearing on the battlefield, but for most of the war, these guys were stuck carrying 20 round magazines. Now you do find these in uh, figure kits, in 135 figure kits, but usually they are not uh, in the correct shape. Uh, in this case, I would like to drape it across the ammunition crate inside the 113, so I'll have to scratch build uh, one myself. But before we get to that, a uh, word from the sponsor. That's right guys, by this time you know this build is sponsored by Zululand Hobbies here in South Africa. Check out their website, zululandhobbies.co.za. They uh, received a lot of new stock. There's all sorts of uh, kits from Tamiya, vehicle, armor, and a few bikes. There's some new trumpeter kits, a few from Italeri, from, uh, from Academy. So do head on over to their website, have a look. You'll definitely find something there that uh, will grab your interest. For making these is quite easy. What You'll need a few things, one of them being um, some kitchen foil, You'll also need something to make a magazine sized uh, square from. In this case, I'm using some uh, high density foam. You'll need some scissors, a ruler, and finally a hobby knife. The first step, of course, is to cut the tin foil. And now you only need a little piece of this, so I cut away one square corner, similar to that. Try not to wrinkle it too much at this stage because we will need to fold uh, the foil into a specific shape. Next, you need to take careful measurements of uh, an existing bandolier. And again, your figure kits should be able to help you with this. You need the length and the width of a magazine. And what's also helpful at this stage is to measure a 20 round M16 magazine. And again, you'll find this on the sprues of your figure kits. I also find that for curved bandoliers, a little piece of string will make it easier to uh, measure an exact length. Having transferred these uh, measurements to our piece of tin foil with a marker, I can now start cutting uh, a little piece of foil, more or less to the correct dimensions. Next, I need to cut the, uh, the magazine shapes. I'll need six of these. And guys, really, you can use anything for this. I've used cardboard. I've used some sheet styrene. In this case, I'm using some foam. Anything that uh, more or less has the same shape as a 35 scale uh, rifle magazine, that will be fine. I now transfer the, uh, the measurements that I took earlier of the rifle magazine onto the foam. And uh, using my ruler, mark the uh, specific areas that I need to cut. And then finally, I cut six magazines from this piece of, piece of foam. Just to make sure, I'd like to uh, just to double check my measurements on the actual item. Going back to the sprue. Next, I grab the piece of uh, kitchen foil I used earlier, apply some ultra glue from Ammo Mig, and uh, I start placing these magazines on the uh, on the inside of that little uh, square of uh, kitchen foil. Just remember to leave about a millimeter between each uh, magazine so uh, the folds will be visible later. There you go, these are the magazines uh, glued into place. Next step is to fold over the, the, uh, the kitchen foil onto these and uh, here a set of pliers will be really helpful. As you go along, you can just keep on pressing the, uh, the foil into, into shape. That's one of the reasons why I'm using kitchen foil, because it's so easy to shape. 
kitchen foil, I believe, is one of the most underrated uh, scratch building materials in scale modeling. Again, keep on pressing. You might need to use a tweezer just to get those clearly demarcated lines between each magazine. Once you've done that, you can move towards the, uh, the top seam, just to fold that over the magazines. And guys, just keep on pressing this into shape. Uh, that's the beauty of kitchen foil uh, with, a, with a glue inside and those uh, foam magazines, they will definitely start taking on the correct shape sooner or later. There we go, this is the final result. Time to go back to the original sprue, just double check our measurements and whether this is the correct size, it certainly looks that way. And uh, we can move on to the next step. That is of course the strap. Uh, for this I'm using one millimeter Vallejo masking tape. Uh, I cut a little section of this and uh, work it into one of the open seams on the uh, kitchen foil bandolier. And this is the final result. I'm certainly happy with this. In retrospect, I could have probably made the strap a bit longer, but uh, for this application, I think it's going to be fine. This is going to be draped over that ammunition uh, crate in the 113. The next step is to uh, apply uh, paint and primer. And again, guys, remember that uh, acrylic paint will not stick to uh, aluminium kitchen foil. Believe me, I've tried. And uh, it's very important that you first uh, apply a very good uh, primer to uh, this little scratch bolt item that we just made. In this case, I'm using Vallejo Olive Drab. This is now sprayed onto the, um, onto the bandolier. Just a nice even uh, coat of primer. Now with this done, we can uh, start some detailing. I'll be using these filters from MIG Productions, one being green for khaki and olive drab, and the other one being brown for dark green. This is very much like a wash, uh, so you apply this and uh, it will flow into all the, uh, all the crevices, all the uh, recess detail. The first one being the lighter color and then followed up with the darker color. Next I'm going to use some dark olive drab and uh, I'm going to brush paint this into all the, uh, all the seams and uh, the recessed areas between every uh, magazine pouch just to give some some color contrast next up is uh, some highlights i'll be using uh, german camouflage beige and uh, i'll be mixing up a lighter color uh, with uh, with olive drab this being my highlight color At this stage, I'm going to dry brush this onto the ammunition bandolier. Again, uh, my dry brushing technique, same as always, I use some uh, cash register paper, remove the, uh, the, as much paint as, pro uh, as possible from, from the bristles of my brush, and then I just lightly dry brush uh, this lightened uh, olive drab color onto the bandolier. And there you can see the, the result. Next, I'm going to paint in some, uh, some highlight colors. I'm using uh, German camouflage beige, and I now brush paint um, some highlight areas onto the bandolier. You can see this makes a huge difference in, uh, in how it looks. I'm now back to uh, the dark olive drab shade again. Again, just painting this into all the recessed areas, all the shadow areas, areas between uh, the rifle magazines and also the, uh, the openings of those uh, individual pouches. Next, to uh, accent the openings of each of those individual pouches, I'm going to use NATO Black and uh, using a fine uh, detail brush, I'm going to highlight the uh, openings of each of those pouches. And you can see the effect. At 
this point I'm happy with my um, my bandolier it certainly looks the business and uh, just to protect all the all the work all the paint I'm going to use a micro flat from microscale and uh, spray this uh, to protect the, uh, the paint. This is a very strong, very durable uh, varnish. I love using this product for a multitude of, of different applications. And in this case, it will be protecting my paint. Here we go, guys. This is the completed uh, M16 bandolier. Um, it looks very close to the, uh, to the originals in my reference pictures. And uh, this is now ready to go into uh, the 113. To apply this, I uh, fold it into shape because it's a kitchen foil, it'll hold that shape. And uh, using some ultra glue, um, I now glue this in place. Might have to press it down a little bit just to get it to stick. A few final finishing touches, a box of C rations, also placed next to that rifle. And there we go, after weeks of work, this is now the completed interior of Academy's M113 Armored Personnel Carry. I'm certainly very happy with this. With this done, I can now finally move to the exterior of uh, this vehicle. Guys, that's it for episode 27. Thank you for joining me. This is a list of the paints and the products that I used available from your local hobby shop. And uh, as always, if you're curious to follow the rest of the bull, do join me on Instagram. I post regular updates there. And uh, looking forward to seeing everyone in the next video.